Hi students, I am Aurokya Swami. The name of this paper is Real Analysis. Some of the chapters of Real Analysis you have learned in the previous semesters, namely Limits and Continuity and Differentiability. In this semester, we are going to learn sequences and series and Riemann integration. The terms sequences, series, and Riemann integrations are not new to you because you have studied sequences, series in your schooling and intermediate, and you have solved a good, quite a good number of problems on integration in your intermediate. Then, what is special in this semester? In your previous classes, you have solved problems on sequences, series, and Riemann integration using formulas without knowing how these formulas were derived. So in this semester, we are going to derive all those formulas. The first topic I would like to take is sequences. In this class, we are going to learn the definition of sequence with the example, type of sequences with the examples, A sequence is a set of numbers arranged according to a particular order. For example, one, two, three, four, there's a set of natural numbers. It's a sequence. One, three, five, seven, set of odd numbers is another sequence. <coughs> two, four, six, eight, all are even numbers. It's a sequence. 1 minus 1, 2 minus 2, so on. What is the formal definition of a sequence? A sequence is a function whose domain is the set capital N of all natural numbers. Now we define what is a real sequence. A real sequence is a function from the set of natural numbers to the set of real numbers. Now you can notice one thing, while defining the definition of a sequence, we have not mentioned about the codomain. But in the case of real sequence, we have to define what is a domain, what is a codomain. In the case of real sequence, the domain set is set of natural number and the codomain is set of real numbers. We can also define real sequence in another form. That is, if f is a function from set of natural number to set of real numbers, then this function f is a real sequence. Let us consider one example. Let the function f be defined as f of n equals to 2n plus 1. Let us keep n equal to 1. Then f of 1 becomes 2 into 1 plus 1 is 3. Then f of 2 becomes 5 f of 3 becomes 7 and 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, these are all set of odd numbers starting from 3. This is also a sequence and this sequence is a real sequence. The father of set theory, namely George Cantor, made a considerable contribution to the development of theory of real sequences. He found a firm base for most of the fundamental concepts of real analysis in sequences of rational numbers. Though Candor's layouts are not convenient in the initial stages, they are quite advantageous while making advanced investigations. The study of many important and advanced concepts becomes easy if the notion of sequence is employed. Now we will define what is a complex sequence. We all know that the real sequence is a function from set of natural number to set of real numbers. Whereas the definition of a complex sequence is a function from set of natural numbers to the set of complex numbers. That is, if f is a function from set of natural number to set of complex number c, then f is called a complex sequence. We confine our attention only to 
real sequences. How to represent a sequence? Let small a be a function from capital N to R, be a sequence. Each number in a sequence is a term of the sequence. The image N belongs to N, instead of denoting it as A of N, we generally denote it by A suffix N. Now let us consider here, F is from A to B is a function defined by F of X equal to X squared, where X belong to capital A. Now this X is from capital A, X squared is from capital B. For example, F of 4, when you keep X is equal to 4, it is 4 squared equal to 16. Now consider A is a function from capital N to capital R, which we had discussed in the previous slide. As we defined F of X, we defined A of N equal to N squared, where N belongs to the set of natural numbers, and the small n is from capital N, N squared is from capital R. Now, the interesting thing is, this A of N, we are going to denote it as A suffix N. That is A suffix N equal to N squared. Here, this AN is called general term or nth term of a sequence. Thus, A1, A2, A3 are the first, second, third terms of the sequence respectively. A sequence is usually denoted by writing its nth term inside the brackets. We can use the brackets, either the flower bracket or the open bracket or the less than greater than symbol. Sometimes it is denoted by writing all its terms within the brackets like the set A1, A2, A3, so on. And this is not a set. Now this here sequence, it is a real sequence. Example, let us consider the subset of the natural number N, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on. And consider the subset of R, capital S, whose elements are 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. That is, the elements of S are nothing but twice the elements of N. It is convenient to describe a sequence with a formula. In this sequence, AN, where AN, the nth term, can be defined as 2 into n, where n belongs to set of natural number because the elements of s are twice the elements of n and hence the nth term a n is 2 n. Now we are going to see some examples how we are going to write nth term of some of the sequences. In the first example, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, so on, set of odd numbers. Here, the nth term is denoted by 2n minus 1. Consider minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, so on. This is a very interesting and important sequence because very often we use the sequence in the classroom. Whose nth term is denoted by a suffix n equal to minus 1 power n. Consider 2, 5, 10, 17, 26, whose nth term is n squared plus 1. Now 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 1, so on. Look at this here. Each term is increased by 0 0.25, whose nth term is 0 0.25 in the n, where n is a natural number. 3, 9, 27, 81, 2, 43, we all know that these are all well-known numbers whose nth term is 3 to the power n. The mth and the nth terms, namely a suffix m and a suffix n, are treated as distinct terms even if they have the same value. It is not necessary that all the terms of the sequence should be distinct. For example, 
the sequence 1 2 comma 1 comma 2 comma so on here the elements are not distinct here if suppose second term is 2 the fourth term is 2 the terms are different but the values are the same now what is the range of a sequence the range or range set is the set consisting of all the distinct elements of a sequence without repetition and without regard to the position of your term for example if you consider sequence 1 2 1 2 so on here the numbers 1 and 2 are repeated infinitely many times and hence here the range of a sequence is just the set containing the two elements namely 1 and 2 let us see some more examples consider the sequence minus 1 to the power n here the nth term is minus 1 power n when n equal to 1 we get minus 1 when n equal to 2 we get 1 n equal to 3 we get a3 equal to minus 1 so on this is a sequence which contains elements minus 1 comma 1 comma minus 1 comma 1 so on what's the range set here the range set is nothing but the distinct elements in the sequence here minus 1 1 are the distinct elements and hence the range set is minus 1 comma 1 which is a finite set consider another example just we introduce the n here so that a n the nth term is n into minus 1 power n as the above we substitute n equal to 1 2 3 4 so on we get a1 is minus 1 a2 is 2 a3 is minus 3 a4 is 4 alternatively the numbers are positive and negative here the sequence is minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 so on it covers all the all the integers except 0 so the range of this sequence is all the elements in the sequence here the range set is infinite set consider the third example very simple example nth term is a n whose uh, whose uh, nth term is denoted by n and the elements are 1 2 3 4 a n 1 plus minus 1 power n keep n equal to 1 2 3 so on we get the sequence 0 2 0 2 0 so on the range set is 0 comma 2 now consider another interesting sequence let us take s1 be the first term of the sequence which is 1 s2 be the second term of the sequence let it be 1 and if we define the rest of the terms using a recurrence formula s suffix n plus 2 equal to s suffix n plus 1 plus s suffix n when n belongs to natural number in this reference formula we know, uh, we know that yeah, first term is 1 second term is 1 if you want to find the third term we have to keep 1 in the reference formula n equal to 1 in the reference formula when you keep n equal to 1 we get s3 equal to s2 plus s1 we know s2 is 1 s1 is 1 and hence s3 becomes s2 plus s1 is 1 plus 1 equal to 2 how do you get fourth term Put n equal to 2 in the reference formula we get 3 and so on we get rest of the terms and hence the sequence sn contains elements 1 1 2 3 5 8 13 21 so on do you know what is the name of the sequence it is very famous sequence the sequence is called fibonacci sequence named after indian mathematician leonardo fibonacci he has got a lot of application mathematics loves nature the application of this sequence is it, we can find in the nature the next one is constant sequence a sequence in which all the terms are equal is known as a constant sequence for example 
the sequence contains elements 3 3 3 3 so on here all the terms are the same and the tens this is a constant sequence and the range of the sequence is just a single ten set namely 3 what is a subsequence if n1 less than n2 less than n3 so on that is if n the sequence n suffix k is an increasing sequence is an increasing sequence of positive integers then the sequence a suffix n k is called subsequence of the sequence a n for example we consider sequence a n which is 1 comma 2 3 4 5 6 so on then the sequence containing all the even numbers 2 4 6 8 so on is a subsequence of a suffix n similarly the set of all our numbers will also be a example of a subsequence of an now see here the sequence 8 6 4 2 10 12 14 so on is not a subsequence because the sequence decreases then increases remember that the place or the position of an element is very important in a sequence because it's an arrangement it has to follow the order therefore this is not a subsequence of the above sequence what is the equality of sequences two sequences a suffix n and b suffix n are said to be equal if their nth terms are equal for every n 